The Foreign Secretary, Boris Johnson, is with me. I guess that's morning. the crucial... Good morning. That is the crucial question. What was the mission and have we really accomplished it? There's one overwhelming reason why this was the right thing to do, and that is to deter the use of chemical weapons, not just by the Assad regime, but around the world. And I think one of the most distressing things about the events of the last few years has been uh, the growth, the contemptuous growth in the use of uh, chemical weapons uh, mm. in the, the Syrian theatre of conflict. And you can imagine uh, that people around the world are looking now and saying, well, finally, someone stood up mm. against that. And the world said, enough uh, to the use of such weapons. It's one of the great achievements of the modern world uh, that we've banned uh, chemical weapons. A hundred years, virtually, mm. uh, that prohibition has been there. And now the UK, France, America have stepped forward to vindicate that. But it's also clear that because we had to warn the Russians in advance what we were doing, so we didn't kill lots of Russians and start World War III, they will have told us, sad, he has moved stuff out. Do you think he still has weapons capability of that nature? I can't answer that question. Clearly, the strikes were uh, successful on three important sites, but the overwhelming purpose, the, the mission was to, to send a message mm. that after years now in which we've seen a series of chemical weapons strikes, four of them, uh, by the way, auth authenticated by the, the OPCW Joint Investigative uh, Mechanism, dozens of other uh, site, uh, attacks of which we have testimony. Finally, uh, the world has said enough is enough. And uh, I think it's important to understand the limits of what we're trying to do. You're this not is not trying about to end the war. That's right, Andrew. And and I think that this is not going to. We must be honest. This is not going to turn the tide of the conflict in Syria. Uh, one can hope that it encourages the Russians to get Assad uh, to the uh, negotiating table in Geneva to get a political process properly going. But that is uh, that is, as it mm. were, an extra. The primary purpose is to say no to the use of barbaric chemical weapons. And I want to come r directly back to that. But before we do, I guess the question on a lot of people's lips today is, is that it now? Because President Trump has talked about being locked and loaded. Are we locked and loaded if Assad uses chemical weapons in a week's time or a month's time or three months' time? Will we do the same thing again? Is this the beginning of a process or is it the end of something? Well, we must hope that it uh, is a deterrent. Obviously, hope, that's, yes. that's, of course. And I believe it's been a successful mission. I believe it's a, a timely, appropriate and mm. uh, commensurate uh, mission. Uh, we but, can't but, tell. But if we in can't three weeks how, we get a chemical attack. We can't tell how the Assad regime uh, will respond. Uh, I believe it was the right response mm. to, to what happened uh, in Douma. Uh, the evidence was overwhelming, as, your, uh, correspond as, as, the, uh, as, as people were discussing just now on your, on your the show. Sunday Times, yeah. On the Sunday Times, the, 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 the smell of chlorine, the, the sight of that uh, regime helicopter in the air, no one else has helicopters. No one else would be capable of dropping a barrel bomb of, of chlorine in that way. The evidence uh, was absolutely overwhelmingly uh, overwhelming. It was timely. It was uh, proportionate. And uh, to get to the legal question, mm. uh, it will, I believe, if we can... If it there is a, a genuine debate about this, isn't there? I if mean... it acts as a deterrent, uh, it, which I hope it will, uh, it can alleviate further a humanitarian suffering. But if the Assad household, an unlikely thought, is watching this programme and they want well, to they know well. if, if, they, if they use chemical weapons again, will they face other attacks? Well, there is no proposal on the table at the moment for further attacks because so far, thank heavens, uh, the Assad mm. regime has not been so foolish as to launch another chemical weapons attack. Uh, if and when, if if when such a thing were to happen, then clearly uh, with allies... Uh, we would study uh, what the options were. Now, I think the other thing that's worried a lot of people around the country is we were so close to the Russians in all of this. Russian submarines were tracking our submarines. Russian troops were very, very close to some of the places we might have attacked and so forth. I know the hotline was going between Trump and Putin, but nonetheless, how close did we get to a confrontation with the Russians? Are you also worried about how serious and dangerous this is now getting? Well, I think it was very important for everybody to communicate very, very clearly uh, to the Russians, uh, to the Iranians, to, uh, to the Assad regime, what this was about. This was about chemical weapons. This was about three particular sites. This was about mm. our determination uh, to, to send a signal, to act as a deterrent. And, and yes, it was sensible, therefore, 
to have conversations and to uh, to deconflict as as far as so we, uh, we, we told the Russians and, what we were going and, to do. Uh, I, I can't say operationally exactly what the, the the contacts were, but it was very important for them in the current uh, understandably strained relations post Salisbury between mm. us and Russia for them to understand the limits of what we're trying to do. So this is not about regime change, as you say. It's not about trying to turn the tide of the conflict in Syria. It's the world sending a signal about the use of chemical weapons. We've seen the erosion of that taboo taking place in the last five, seven years. We've got to stop that erosion. Mm. We've, got to, we've got to re erect the boundary in, in human psychology. And, and you've been very weapons. clear that that is what this was about and nothing else. So to be absolutely clear, Assad, who seems to be winning the war, more or less mopping up opposition at this point, can carry on killing people with barrel bombs and machine guns and bombs of all kinds as long as he doesn't use chemical weapons. I, that, I'm afraid that is the unhappy uh, corollary of, of, of this, mm. that mm. if we say that we are limiting our action to, uh, to chemical weapons, our particular desire to reinforce that prohibition, which is, which is what this is all about, then yes, of course it follows that the rest of the, of the Syrian war must proceed as it, as it will. And there's no doubt about mm -hmm. what you say. Assad is determined to uh, butcher uh, his way to a kind of Carthaginian peace in Syria. It would be a great thing if the Russians, and it's only the Russians, I'm afraid, not uh, the Americans, alas, but only the Russians, if the Russians put the pressure on him to come to the negotiating table in Geneva. Have you spoken to Mr Lavrov since this happened? Uh, I'm afraid to say that uh, contacts with the Russians uh, have not been good, but there is a regular discussion at, as you can see, at the P5 uh, level in, uh, in the UN Security Because, Council. again, a lot of people would say this is the moment, above all, for the British government and the Russian government yeah. to start negotiations, start talking again properly. Yes, and, well, I, as I say, there are, there are abundant contacts uh, at the military, at the security mm. level, and, and, and uh, as you'll have seen on the TV, at the, uh, in the P5 in, uh, in, in New York. And we get our points over to the Russians. They understand very clearly uh, where we're coming from. And so when it came to uh, this particular yeah. action, there's, there'd be no doubt uh, we were making clear to Russia what we were trying to achieve and what we were not yes. trying to achieve. Mr Lavrov has suggested that Britain uh, faked these attacks, that Britain was also responsible in some sense for faking what happened in Salisbury. Yes. All these allegations are coming out. Does that make it impossible for you to have a conversation with him? No. Uh, uh, we will continue to engage with Russia. Of course, that's... That's right. I, I was struck that your previous guest did not seek to uh, dismiss uh, these suggestions with quite the uh, vigor, you quite, right. quite the vigor that you might, that you might have uh, uh, you might have expected, since it is plainly an utterly preposterous and deranged suggestion uh, to say that uh, either that Britain was involved in uh, what happened in Salisbury, uh, which is blatantly offensive, or that we were somehow involved in in what happened in Douma which is absolutely demented. Looking at the timing of what's happened, a lot of people are asking themselves whether the, the hurry to do the, make these attacks was to avoid having a commons vote before they happened. No, I don't believe that uh, it can be sustained uh, at all. I think the, the, the imperative, clearly, was to uh, get something done that was balanced, that was proportionate, uh, that was effective and in, in degrading uh, Assad's chemical weapons capability. But in doing it in such a way as to protect the security of our armed services to enable them to do it with the dispatch and efficiency that they need. And, and there is abundant uh, precedent. There is abundant, yeah. uh, as you know, the cabinet manual and, uh, and yeah. the, the doctrine of the prerogative power makes it absolutely clear that the, that the, uh, the, the NSC had, had a right. discussion, the, is the cabinet is... had a discussion. And uh, as, as, no. as you know, the prime minister will be making a, a statement in the House of Commons tomorrow, mm. which will be an opportunity for parliamentarians to, uh, to hold the executive to account on this matter. Jeremy Corbyn says that he would like a debate and a vote. Would you welcome that? Well, uh, as I say, the, the Prime Minister is going to be uh, making a full statement uh, tomorrow. Mm. I know that uh, uh, the Speaker uh, tends to allow virtually everybody who wants to uh, make their point, to ask a question, to, to mm. intervene in such a matter, uh, to have their say, there will be abundant time for people to get their points of view across. But if the opposition use their parliamentary powers for a, an emergency debate followed by a vote, would the government oppose but that? That would be a matter for the, for the usual channels and for the Speaker and for, and for, and would, for, would parliamentarians, you, you and for parliamentarians to decide. Well, let's see what the, 
the opposition proposed. All right, let's turn to um, back to, to, to the Scripple poisoning case. Yes. Um, the evidence has been suggested uh, being very, very strong. We heard the interview from the head of Porton Down when he was less ca categorical, perhaps, than we expected about the origins of the Novichok. You were much criticised for an interview you gave to German television in which you said you'd had absolute categorical assurances from Porton Down. What yes. exactly well, did you mean? Yes, I'm, well, thank you for, for, for asking that because uh, this happened over Easter, as I recall. As I, as I, and uh, I was being very clear, I thought I was being very clear to... Uh, Deutsche Welle, the, the German programme, which is that uh, Porton Down told us in absolutely no uncertain terms that this was a military grade uh, Novichok so they, they knew what it was. They didn't of a just... type of a, 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 and furthermore, of a type that had been produced and stockpiled in the, in the former Soviet Union. And I, and I said, is that really, are you sure about that? And they said they were absolutely certain that that was uh, what it was. Now, uh, it is not the business of, of Porton Down, I, and I don't know whether it's even possible uh, for them to identify the origin of a, uh, mm, of, of a you know, of a, like, as, any more than you might be able to identify the origin of a sample of, of sulfuric acid. But as the OPCW uh, confirmed just uh, this week, last week, uh, it mm. was indeed military-grade Novichok uh, of a type that, uh, as I said to you on, the, on your show and a while back, had been stockpiled likely for assassination purposes by Russia in the last 10 years. And had you, so, seen, sorry, so, had you seen the evidence about all the, the allegations from the security services about it being tested on door handles yeah. and the scripples being pursued for five years as well? I, I, at that stage, we hadn't seen that particular uh, piece of, uh, of evidence, mm. which has only emerged, as you know, in the last uh, few days from the National Security Advisor. But it, it is quite extraordinary in view of the weight of evidence now uh, Novichok used uh, in assassination attempts on, on, on door handles. Uh, the, the, the hacking mm. of, the, uh, of Yulia Skripal's uh, mobile phone. Uh, the, to continue to uh, deny the, the likelihood of Russian uh, involvement, uh, of, of state-sponsored yeah. assassination attempt, uh, I think is, is quite extraordinary. And a, a sort of uh, a blindness okay. to reality this is that I find very, very perplexing. A sort of the, okay, but th th this is defiant refusal okay, well, to we'll, accept we'll, that uh, the, we'll, the Kremlin we'll could be We're getting into subordinate clauses here. What I was going to ask you is that this has taken us to a point where our relationship with Russia is as bad, probably, as it ever was during the Cold War. People have been talking about um, 1963 and the confrontation over the Cuban Missile Crisis and it being of that order. What is the way back from here? Uh, I think it's a, a very important point. And uh, look, don't be any doubt, it's not something that we relish, any more than I relish the use of, of military strikes uh, in Syria by the UK, the US and France. No one wants to do this. We had to do this uh, to reinforce the point about chemical weapons. With Russia, uh, I went to Moscow in December. We held out the hand mm. of engagement. We want to engage uh, with Russia. Of course we do. But I'm afraid that the Russians give us every possible signal and evidence that we also have to beware. And that, I'm afraid, is Are, you, I, I, I are don't, you concerned I, by some of the things they are now saying after these strikes in Syria about there being some kind of uh, revenge attacks? That, that, um, we'll talk about our uh, NHS facilities, our electrical facilities being vulnerable to Russian cyber attack. Are I you think, concerned I about that? I think we have to take every possible precaution. And when you look at what Russia has done, not just in, in, in this country, in mm. Salisbury, but the, uh, the attacks on TV stations, on, uh, on the democratic processes, uh, on critical national infrastructure. Of, of course, mm. we have to be very, very cautious indeed. But I want to stress, uh, we do not, we in the UK, do not seek an escalation. Absolutely not. Okay. That was why it was so important to get our message over to Russia, uh, over to everybody uh, involved, that our response is limited to saying no to chemical weapons. Uh, Chogham, the Commonwealth uh, Heads of Government Conference, is coming up very shortly. It's been suggested that this is a moment for the British government to start to apologise for some of the wrongs that we perpetrated as British uh, states over the years to other Commonwealth countries. Do you agree with that? Well, that hasn't been suggested to me by any Commonwealth uh, leader, foreign minister or, or, or Sherpa of the summit that I've 
met so far. Nobody has yet come up with this brilliant proposal. I think it may have emanated from the, the Labour Party, if I, unless I missed my... It may uh, have done. It may have emanated from the Labour Party. I, but anyway, mm. uh, it's, it's, not, but it's, it. not a, it's not a proposal that, uh, as mm. I understand, carries much uh, support amongst the, uh, the 53. And it's going to be a great summit. It's going to be... It, you, you've got countries of some of the fastest growing economies in the world, uh, 2.4 billion people, and we're going to have a... We're, I think mm. it will be a, a, a great opportunity for us to uh, rebuild okay. old friendships. And would you like to see the Prince of Wales taking over as head of the Commonwealth in due course? That is a matter for the 53 uh, to decide. Not for you. Not Finally, for you. you'll have seen Patrick Stewart perhaps earlier yeah. on saying that there's going to be this new campaign, the People's Vote, Yeah. Um, well, to, to bring back, and it seems perfectly reasonable, to bring back the terms that have been negotiated, the actual deal, nothing unspecific, nothing vague, nothing hypothetical, well, the real deal, and let people vote on the real well, deal. Yeah. Why not? Well, well. Why not? Uh, I mean, I, I th we are going to, people had a vote, it was a great vote, and they voted uh, uh, with a substantial majority to leave the EU. We're now trying to deliver uh, on that uh, mandate from the people, I think we'll get a, we'll get a great result and uh, we'll be able to not only to have a, a gigantic free trade deal with our friends and partners across the channel, but uh, to adapt to uh, uh, Patrick, oh, he had something to do with Star Wars, didn't he? We'll be able to boldly go again. Be able to boldly we'll be able go, to but... boldly go again uh, to areas that perhaps we've neglected over the last Full uh, of dangerous years. alien spacecraft uh, places, waiting to places zap where, us. Places, no, no, on the contrary, friendly, wonderful uh, places where we can mm. renew uh, old friendships, uh, rebuild uh, relationships and develop fantastic new free trade deals. And a lot of that is going to be on the table at the Commonwealth Summit next week. Foreign this Secretary, week. thanks very much thank indeed you. for talking to us. Now